kind of want to go deeper into like how really working in a restaurant as a child was for me. I didn't know how to have a social life as a kid because of how much work was pushed onto me. Mm -hmm. I dreamed of being a regular American. Yeah, I did not yeah. want to be Chinese. Hello. Hi. Who is this? My name is Winnie. Uh, how is life, Winnie? Um, it's been okay. I can't say it's the best. I'm kind of like enslaved, but you know, it's You're been enslaved. Right. Yeah, you know, I'd like to call it that for the jokes, but um, like you know how there are like jokes online where it's like people walk into like a fast food Chinese restaurant and you see a seven year old at that counter. Mm. Like, yeah. Were you so the seven year old? That used to be me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it still kind of is me. I'm just older now. So. Interesting. Yes. Um, it says here that, um, you've been working at your family's Chinese restaurant since you were a child. And uh, they have high expectations of you, but never give you time to do the things that you want to do in your life. Mm -hmm. so, so, um... are they expecting you to take over the family business? Well, actually, it's more of... So, you, like, take... They want me to go to, like because I'm graduating. Um, they want me to go to colleges such as maybe Yale or like Harvard, just like any big one. And if I don't get into it, they expect me to go into a nearby college so I can still help out. I'm not getting paid for any of this. Okay. Uh, Winnie, what do you want to do with your life? I want to be a graphic designer and like, like, you know how there are Asian parent stereotypes. My Asian parents are like the definition of the stereotypes. They want mm -hmm. me to be maybe a lawyer, doctor, whatever makes a lot of money. And I'm just mm -hmm. here wanting to go into some kind of art. Mm-hmm. So. What is your current ability in graphic design? Actually, I think I'm doing pretty well for myself. I recently did win a art competition. Kind of proud of it. That's awesome. Um, um like. I so kind of want to go deeper. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, please, please go deeper. Okay. I kind of want to go deeper into like, like how really working in a restaurant as a child was for me because yeah, I would love to hear that. I see like, because I see online, there's like always people that are like, wow, children are actually doing something with their lives, but I hated it. Um, it was, it was like something that was forced on me that I did not want. Um, I've been working in the rest. So I used to live in China until I was five. And then once I moved to America, I would like, I was already working there right when I moved there. So it was just like this whole thing where like, I could not have a social life I didn't know how to have a social life as a kid just because of how much work was pushed onto me. Mm -hmm. And people around me just acted normal. And, and like, and like always, Asian parents, they're like, how do I say this? My Asian parents, they are like, they're really judgmental. Except it's like, 
when I walk to work one day, and one of them, it's like because we've known each other for so long, they treat me as like kind of a coworker, but also a kid. So they have dominance over me, but it's in a casual way, except not really. But like, if I were to walk into a restaurant one day, the restaurant one day, and I would be wearing like something that I do like. I think it's a pretty nice outfit. And one person on there would point out, "Wow, your out- outfit is really ugly today." And this statement goes like sticks. It's there for like a week or two, and it just mm-hmm. lowers everything. And it low key, mm-hmm. it like I begin to hate my own family. Your your these are this oh. is something that your your you wear this dress and your your parents say to you that it's ugly. Yeah. Mhm. 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 Mm. But it's not only a thing of self confidence. I would say like a lot of stress goes because like as a child I. It was really bad to like the point where I wanted to, like, not exactly kill myself or anything, but、um, it was like I I dreamed of being a regular American. I、yeah. did not want to be Chinese.、Uh-huh. Like, I I'm okay with my nationality right now, but before I. <laughs> I wanted to be like everyone else around me, and I feel like I don't know. I feel like you have to go through something really like troubling to like actually think that, especially when you're seven. So,、um, hmm. yeah. How old is that? How old you were when you started working in the restaurant? Actually, I started working when I was five, but I didn't really have like, like you know, like a self-conscious. Like I could not think, you know,、mm-hmm. like I was a kid. But like, when you were in, when you were in middle school and in high school, like, did you get to hang out with your friends at all, or do? Anything that kind of resembled a normal high school experience, or was it a hundred percent working at the restaurant? Um. Okay. So when I was younger, um, like back in elementary school, like it was, it was a hundred percent. I, it got to the point where, like, like I said, I had no social life when I was a lot younger. Um, there was like. There was no time for me for anything, and like I was basically isolated. It was like I got bullied a moment in my life during that period because I was doing this much. So,、mm-hmm. but um, in middle school it kind of started getting better. They allowed me to um be late to work with extracurriculars. But there was still not m- many events that I could attend, and like、um, when I got into high school, it it also got a lot less stricter. But it's still like any free time I have, I don't have、mm-hmm. anything that's like extracurricular, school related, like. I, it's to the point where like, I still try to hang with my friends, but yeah. So I'm hoping when, to move to college far away. You're hoping to move to college far away. Okay, I want yes,、yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about the present for a second. Um, I have a couple of thoughts. Um. Tell me about. 
I think we both know that as you are presently, now that you're an adult and now that you have the opportunity, you know, you need to relinquish the control that your parents have over your life. And I want to know in your head what, if anything, the fear surrounding that looks like. Are you afraid to have a conversation with them about you, what you want to do? Are you afraid to just run away and ghost them completely? What, if anything, in the sphere of taking control of your own life and relinquishing your your parents' power over you do you have? I mean, are you afraid? I of actually... I don't think I'm too afraid of it. I've confronted yeah. them about it, saying, like, like I've told them what I want to do with my life, and they're like, okay, but it ends up becoming a lecture in which they lecture me about, like, how life is hard, and I get it, they're immigrants. Like, they went through a lot of hardships, and I understand that, Life is hard. It's a lecture that's been given to me multiple times. And now I understand it. They still don't recognize what I say at all. Mm -hmm. Like, even though so, they go on a full entire lecture, nothing so, I said is, like, remembered. So, the hard part is going to be, like, making your decisions of what you want to do with your life and trying to get yourself to a point where your parents can lecture you and they can say whatever they say but you know in your gut and your mind what's the right thing for you to do and the confidence you have in that knowledge and in yourself overrides your desire to go along with what your parents say to the point where what your parents say mm -hmm. is, is irrelevant. But, um, honestly, like I want, I want to be able to do that, but because, um, they're, they are pretty old. So I know I've got to like support them. My I have siblings that aren't making much money and barely can live. So like I feel like there's a responsibility, but I also know that I want to do something in my life away from them. Mm -hmm. It's I feel like me telling them like sometimes when I tell them that oh I want to go to like this state really far away from the state we are in right now and I feel like it's just me trying to escape responsibility you know it's difficult because I, I understand yeah. where you're coming from I understand where you're coming from in the sense that you love your family and you feel a responsibility to take care of them. Can I ask how old they are? Um, they're like 40, 50-ish. Around okay. that decade. Eh? Okay. I understand where that comes from. And, you know, I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life at all. But... You know, Winnie, you get one go around on the planet... And um, I think you should f feel empowered now that you're an adult to do what you want with your one life, especially considering that your parents have had you working for them and giving to them 
13 years for free in that restaurant and you've just given them so much that I I can't imagine in what universe it would be unfair for you now as an adult to go I want to make my own decisions I want to go see the world I want to go do art and I'm willing to take on the responsibility of whether or not I succeed or fail in those ventures, but I have to go do it. And I I don't think that would be unfair and I don't think that would be running away from responsibility, especially considering how much you've already given them working in that fucking restaurant. Yeah. And I know I that's that. and I know that's really scary. Although I although I don't know how you're feeling about it because you seem like you told me that you confronted them and I didn't know that when you were first talking about it. So and that's why I was asking you what your level of fear is around taking that kind of control. I know I have confronted them. I think the really thing, like the bigger thing that I'm afraid of. Is I'm probably gonna run out of money in the middle of everything. So, like, if I were to venture out, I think if I were ever to make the decision to venture out, I think money is gonna be something because we're not the most well off. They're not gonna, okay. especially because if I were to just leave them in the dust basically mm-hmm. they would not be doing anything for me sure sure they wouldn't financially support you let me let me okay let me ask you this and um and i don't know but this idea that you have that you're going to run out of money and that you won't be able to make money what is that idea based off of have you have you picked a city and dived into with the re cause look, you have the internet, you have Wi-Fi. I know this because you're calling me and you're on my stream. Have you gone on the internet? Have you call have you go have you been like, you know what? I want to go to Seattle and looked on fucking Google Maps at restaurants in Seattle and given them calls or gone on Craigslist and seen seen what odd jobs are there. Like, have you done any research into this plan before coming to that conclusion? Um, I have done a bit, although it's not like it's more in the general area of where I am going to study. And also, I also take some information from the lectures they gave, my parents gave me. Okay. But it's more like, yeah, because I mentioned I was going to plan to go out of state. I, um, going out of state costs a lot of money. Well, a well lot. okay, so we're, now we're, well, listen, here's the thing, Winnie. We're talking about two different things now, because you're talking about going to college. And I'm talking oh, about... Yeah. And I'm just talking about you going to another state and building a new, uh, building an independent life for yourself, which totally does not okay. require you to go to college. You're talking about going to college for graphic design. Yes. Okay. I I have. Again, you go do whatever you want with your life, but in my opinion, if you want to learn fucking Photoshop and art. Oh, fuck it. I'm gonna tell you what to do with your life. I, I would not. I would not <laughs> go into. I would not go into debt. I would not go into debt. There's a way. Yeah. Like the un. Like, okay, here's the thing, Winnie. The under. The underlying idea behind what you want to do. I want to go into the arts, and I want to move out of state, and I want to establish a life for myself. I very much mm-hmm. want you to think of a new version of that plan because because there's a lot. Yeah of executable versions of that plan that do not require you to be in tens of thousands of dollars of debt to a university. 
And I want you to consider that idea. Because... Yeah, I have. You could totally like, oh. move to a new city, find a gig in that city, find some roommates. In the, it'd be difficult, but it's doable. Go to a new city, find a gig in that city, working at a restaurant, get some roommates in a shitty little place that's your... But it's your fucking place, your room, your rules, your wife and your parents. Do the work at the restaurant, and then when you're not at the restaurant, you go on... You pirate Adobe, you go on YouTube, you learn how to make art, and you just start making stuff. You start uploading to Instagram, you start uploading to TikTok, you get gigs here and there, and you just kind of grind it yourself without having to get money from your parents, without having to spend a shit ton of money on tuition and all the stuff that you would have to do in college. And I don't know if that's what you want, but I'm just telling you that a, a version of what you, a version of what it sounds like you desire exists without you having to go to college for it. Because I think that's a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't usually like to tell people what to do and what not to do, but college gets me because. It'd be, it'd be a different thing if you did want to do like your parents are telling you to do and go be a lawyer and go be a doctor, then yeah, you got to go to college. But if you want to be in the arts and in graphic design, I I think it's a bad move to go into a whole bunch of debt when you could do that on a much cheaper route from the ground up. What do you think about that? But I actually think that's a pretty good idea. But once again, my parents... If I, like, don't even go to college, they will disown me. Like, yeah. I will never see them again. Mm -hmm. Like, they are gone from my life. And that wouldn't be my choice. Because if I want them gone from my life, I want it at least to be my choice. I don't know if you can it. But... Yeah, it's kind of a weird situation. You know, I, I'm 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 sorry to hear that, Winnie. That makes me very sad that your parents feel that way. Um And I, I don't have a thing that I can tell you that'll make that not suck. That that really sucks yeah. to hear. But um I hope th that you do have the courage to go out and live your own life because I think you should. I I I I I I I, I think it fucking sucks that your parents have some condition upon which they want you in their life. That just sucks. That just is this sucky thing that I I I don't know what there is that you can do about it yeah. but I hope it doesn't scare you away from in the aftermath and dust of that pain really pursuing what it is that you want to do yeah I get that I, I know you're in a really tough situation, but um, I hope that uh, I hope that you have the courage to do whatever you feel is is right for your life. Mm -hmm. Um, Winnie, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No. Have a good rest of the night, Winnie. Thank you for calling and sharing. Mm -hmm. Bye. That was a tough situation. That was really tough. I feel I feel I feel really bad for her that her parents have this like conditional love. And it's such a fucking hard thing to navigate because it's like it's your fucking mom and dad. But yet and and she should totally feel like she has the um agency to do what she wants with her life and it would be a uh, just a waste to like spend it all serving them you know uh 
And I, I, I don't know. It's a tough thing to navigate. And I just, I hope. I, I also, I hate the idea that she feels as though the only way for her to achieve what she wants to achieve is to give some institution hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think that's an outdated thing. Um, and I don't know, man. I hope, she, I hope she makes it work. I hope she makes it work with with what she's got and uh you know i feel for her and uh i appreciate her sharing hello hello how are you oh i'm doing pretty good uh what's going on with you oh not much man i saw you at your the denver show uh oh hell yeah phenomenal job i uh i asked you to try on your gecko gecko hat oh shit you know what? Okay, actually, Mark twenty nine from Colorado. I remember you. Okay, all right. I'm gonna tell you well, something here. All right, so you, I remember you because you went to the Denver show and I met you when I did my meet and greet afterwards. And um, you told me that you wanted to come on stage and tell a story about the time that you made a fake online bakery selling fake muffins. This is correct. This is you. Yeah, yeah, more, more or less. Yeah, so I. I just saw you went live earlier, and I wanted to give you a call oh. and maybe tell you a little bit about that time. Yeah, and it's funny because right when you walked away, I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And I was like, you should call in with it. And normally when I say that and you walk away, I'm thinking to myself, I'm never going to hear from that guy ever again. But we're here. We're actually on the podcast, and you actually did call in, <laughs> and now I actually can hear this story. Yeah, this is the first time I've actually tried to call in. I've watched for a long time, but like, it's hoping it worked out at the show, but I'm glad to tell you this story. So I woke up one day, I was just like thinking like, man, it would be really like cool to own a bakery, just generally. Like that would be an awesome life. Like you'd be so happy selling like baked goods to people. Like everyone is always like pumped whenever they're like, you're not gonna be mad eating a cupcake or a donut. So I was like, what if I, make this post so i posted on facebook this post about muffins i had like eight different flavor options you know lemon poppy seed macadamia nut you know banana nut, like all all the options and tons of payment information and i was like is this gonna get me in trouble in any way and it didn't end up like like i posted it i didn't think anything was gonna happen but like i was getting calls from my family and people asking if i was okay i was getting like asked if like I needed money or <laughs> people thought I was selling uh, weed, like weed muffins on the internet. And I told people I wasn't uh, and that I was all fake and people were just super confused. And it actually, yeah, I'm really confused fire. right now. Yeah, I, I completely understand. Uh, and so it fueled everyone's fire though, because my friends thought it was hilarious. So they posted in the comment sections, like, Oh, these are the best muffins ever. Uh, you know? So, People thought it was actually real because there were people commenting about how good they were. So a couple of days later, I followed up and like made a post about how it was sold out and thanking everyone. Uh, and someone was like, is this real? And I posted like, it feels real. And <laughs> for months, people were asking me when I went out, uh, like if I could, if I had muffins or uh, they were asking my girlfriend. And it made me think I should start an online business, like a satirical company it's really involved in like muffins and like just baking and all the ingredients and like have videos about that. And then no muffins ever sold. They're always sold out. Something happened. The, the ingredients were stolen. The truck slipped on the interstate, just something like that. And all you ever, all I ever sold is t-shirts and I've never done it, but I've always wanted to. Mm. It's an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea. Um, I like, you know what I like about it is that you woke up one day and you decide, here's what I like about the story. You woke up one day and you decided that you wanted to run a bakery and you thought about the things involved in doing that. You thought about, oh, I'd have to own a storefront. I would have to, and here's the kicker actually bake and sell goods and you were like i don't want to do any of that stuff but i still want to own a bakery and you didn't let the obstacle of having to actually 
produce and sell products stop you from doing the store. And I like that. That's very ambitious. I mean, exactly. I mean, I feel like we're, we might maybe be in the same situation somewhat because, I mean, there's, I mean, there's no way for you to physically be a gecko, but you're putting in the work to try to be a gecko. Oh, yeah. We're definitely of the same ilk. But I just like being silly, too. Like, I like, like you were saying earlier, like, I think it's fun to do stuff that is, like, not super invasive, but just still be silly and push the envelope. Like, mm. I, um, uh, I tried to, I pretended to sneak on a cruise ship once. Um, and that got me in a little bit of trouble. But well, let, well, let's, let me ask you this. Did this get you in any kind of trouble? The muffin story did not. It just made people concerned about me and slightly for my mental health, maybe. But I just, so I just like being silly. But people take Facebook too seriously. If it was on Twitter, it would have been fine, but Facebook, everyone thinks, is way too close to real life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so your friends and family, they thought that you were actually convinced that you ran a bakery. Uh, I think the thing was people were just concerned that I all of a sudden was selling muffins out of the blue on the Internet. And I might have be, like be in some financial woe or have some trouble falling to me when I wasn't doing good. Uh, Cause I went to Thanksgiving uh, like, you know, six months later and my cousin was like asking me like, yeah, my mom was like, saw you were posted on the internet about selling muffins and was asking like, if like you were okay and stuff. So does has any part of you actually desired to make the muffins? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, mostly because I think it would just be, it's, it's so fun if the, like the idea of like never actually having the muffins, but like being so into it and then just not existing and just like, it's kind of just like getting, maybe you can get people behind the idea because then everyone's like, oh yeah, I've had the muffins and everyone's just going to say that. And then no one's going to be like, want to ruin the surprise. Oh, listen, they don't exist. It's not real. It's inspiring. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I, I this happened like a year or two ago, and I, I still think about creating the company sometimes. Um, yeah. Let, once I well, let, I, again, you know, I feel like the uh, fastest you can go from idea to execution, the better. And you really, uh, mm-hmm. you really, kind of drove that home. Yeah. Also, can I ask you what city uh, is, like, behind you, if you know? I've just been watching, and I've just been curious what city is walking around in. Uh, right now, on the visual of this uh, show, this is this is North Dakota. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Now, that, I, my curiosity, uh, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Mark, is there anything else that. you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, man, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate the project, and, you know, I just, like... If you're struggling out there, just keep pushing. Like, you know, that's all you got to do. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. You too, man. Peace. I wonder how many people he just drove completely insane that ordered muffins and never got them. What's up? Hey, is this Rick? Yeah, this is Rick. What's up, man? Nothing much. Yourself? Ah, just being a gecko, hanging out. I have to pee a little bit, but I think that's going to motivate me with this phone call because I'll have a little bit of something to fight against. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. I've probably done some of my best work needing to urinate full bladder. What's going on with you, Rick? So, I mean, a lot's going on with me, but the most pressing issues I'm in real therapy for, but I have like a little bit of a smaller issue in my life. That's just a little bit embarrassing. Um, so I'm a software engineer at a, uh, at a pretty big company, um, Microsoft. So yeah, I, 
have like some some swag, you know, like some hats and shirts and whatnot from the company that I've gotten, purchased, whatnot. And uh, I, I get myself in this like little bit of a ego, you know, like type of uh, position where like I want to wear like a hat or a shirt that says yeah. Microsoft on it because I don't really have much to my identity, but I want like people to know that I'm a software engineer at Microsoft and, you know, have that be part of me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if you're the same way. Maybe you go out and you wear a oh, t-shirt yeah. that says therapy gecko on it. You think I don't, you think I don't go out in public with my therapy gecko t-shirt hoping that I'm at the grocery store and somebody is like, you know, uh, somebody points at my shirt and goes, is that therapy gecko? I love that podcast. And I go, yeah, it's pretty great. And then walk away. Like I'm fucking Peter Parker. You think I don't do that? Never happened before. I'm sure you do it. Never happened, but I fucking do it all the time in the hopes that it will. And you fantasize about it. You're in good company, Rick. You're in good company. You're in good company to everyone listening. We all have a little bit of, we all have a little bit of that. I don't think it's a shameful thing. I think it's a human thing. Um, you say that a lot of your identity has been tied up in uh, uh, the fact that you have this cool job. Is that is that accurate? And this is a safe space. I actually love talking about um, this particular thing. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, a lot of my identity is tied up in that. Before that, I don't know, my identity was like, I had a pretty fucked up childhood and I'm, you know working on that and you know i always just kind of like would gravitate towards like defining my personality by that and now it's like oh well i actually managed to crawl through college and and get out and get my degree and now i got this job and that's pretty cool and now it's transitioning from like childhood trauma to i work at microsoft mm-hmm 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 you know, this is an interesting thing, the whole finding identity through an external thing. And it's something that I am always checking myself about with, you know, what I do. We, You know, you mentioned uh, the Therapy Gecko t-shirt thing. And, you know, look, when I go to I, – I'm always trying to check myself, making sure I'm not uh, getting too much of my identity out of what I do. Because I, I know it's a dangerous thing. And I, and I think you know it's a dangerous thing too. And that's why um, – you're calling in about it. I don't think it should be, I don't think you should see it as a shameful thing. I think it's a natural impulse, but you know, we, we both know it's a dangerous thing it, just in general to get your sense of identity from, uh, external things, right? Because look, you know, you could get fired from your job tomorrow. Um, I could get banned off of fucking all of my Instagram for no reason. You know, we, well, uh, everything external going on in our lives could drop in an instance and then who would we be right so it's it's a it's a fucking not a good thing to tie yourself to things that are not fully within your control i don't think you should look at it um from a, a position of shame because like i said it's a natural thing um so the, i think the question then becomes what do you then tie your identity to? Right? You, you gotta, gotta that's, that's, you gotta that's unlearn. Because it's not the, like a, I'm not like a like a star software engineer at Microsoft. Like uh, I'm doing my job, but like I, I don't know. Like I, it's it's not like it's like I'm like a good software engineer. I'm just a software engineer, you know. So it, I wouldn't say that that's my identity definitely like liking computers and stuff as part of my identity hmm. what gives you self-esteem oh not much that's something that i'm working on right 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 Pretty you said not much person. you said not much but what is there anything to start with uh i'm, I'm independent to a degree not not so much emotionally but like other than that like I can get stuff done that I need to, um, but, uh, you know, I, I like to think that I'm, you know, working on myself and a lot of people aren't, I'm able to like admit 
places in my life that I've I've like heavily fucked up and that's that's hard to do. I like all those answers that you are um working on yourself. I think that's an important one. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to uh adopt into my philosophy is like you know getting self esteem from the fact that I'm working on it. Uh, I showed up. Yeah, it's like right? a growth mindset type of deal. It's a big like concept in like corporate. You know, like, <laughs> these are the type of people we want to hire. People who can like learn and grow. But you know, that kind of applies to your life too. No matter how cliche it might sound. Right. Well, it's not even that. It's a cliche. It's not even a cliche thing. It's like it's within your control. Again, Microsoft can fire you. But they can't take Absolutely. away you showing up to life every day, right? I mean, that's a good thing to get self-esteem from. It's just anything within your control. The fact that you try your best. And that's, the that's I feel like, a really good thing to build your, your self-esteem on. But It's, it's hard, though, because you can get caught up in, like, judgments and, like, I did this thing that I know people would think is fucking awful or weird. And like, I'm trying to move past that, but you know, it's just like, it feels like it's haunting me. You know, I, I struggle with, with OCD and ADHD and uh, you know, those are two very um, polarizing conditions when it comes to, you know, coping. Cause it's like the medication for the ADHD makes the OCD worse. But it's like without that medication, I'm kind of like not very useful of a human being <laughs> when it comes mm-hmm. to like my work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a little bit of a tangent. No, I don't think it's a tangent. Hmm. I'm trying to see what I wanted to say to you just. Oh, God. See what I wanted to say to you just now was like, you know, you don't have to base all your self esteem off of your work. But. I'm thinking about now you got me thinking about myself. Am I basing my self esteem off of my work? And then if I am, maybe it's a good place to start for some people that, you know, maybe, I don't know. Cause I do get, you know, it's, it's a really, dude, it's so hard. I, I love this topic. Cause I find it, I find it fucking fascinating because, and I hope I'm not, I hope that me, I'm going to talk about myself for a second. I hope that me talking about myself isn't derailing from me talking about you, but you got me on thinking about this. No, it's, I, it's hard because I, I, I get a lot of self-esteem out of what I do and I like it. It's been, it's been really great. I feel like I can be uh, open and honest and express myself on here. And I, you know, see it does. It makes me feel good getting positive feedback. The fact that people listen to the podcast, like I do, I get a lot of good feelings and vibes and self-esteem from what I do. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, but it's a fucking external thing. And you should, you shouldn't get build your self-esteem from external shit. You know, that's a, that's a one, that's a really one of the, one of my big, um, uh, sort of balances I'm trying to find here is to not get so wrapped up in my own identity with my work, but also struggling with, well, shit, these, these, are, I mean, these, I'm getting good feelings from this stuff. And I, as a person, lucky enough to be experiencing those good feelings, should be grateful for them in the moment, but not hinge my everything to them. That's kind of how I've landed on it a little bit. I don't know if, if you, any of this stuff kind of resonated with you at all and what you're thinking about in your own life. No, it, it absolutely does. It's kind of like kind of building yourself and, but, but, you know, not, not mixing together your identity with what you enjoy doing or what you work on so much. Right. Right. So, you know, look, wear your mic. That's the thing. Wear your Microsoft shirt, and I'll wear my therapy and, and shirt. Like, I, 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 like, I want to be humble about it. You know, like, I know that I'm much, I'm very well off financially, you know, 
all those things, you know. So it's like I don't want to be like, oh, haha, I work at Microsoft and like walk into, you know, like somewhere where people aren't making so much money because honestly, the value of the work I'm doing is nothing compared to a lot of professions that get paid a eighth of what I get paid to society. Okay. You know, like mm-hmm. the world will go on another day without like like stuff teams. But, you know, social workers, for example, get paid like nothing, which it just isn't fair. But it's yeah, I don't know. I'm just responding to some of the chat a little bit. <laughs> ah, Rick, you son of a bitch. I was reading the chat and people were like saying Rick is in the chat. And I was going to, um, Rick, are you reading, Rick, have you been reading the chat this entire call? Uh, on and off. Why is that? Okay. Is that against some unspoken rule? Rick, it is, it is, it is like absolutely that. against some unspoken rule. Please don't do that. Cause it's just, it's just distract. You're supposed to be talking to me right now and you're not doing that. You're look. you're reading. I apologize. I'm from closing, I am closing my laptop. No, I was reading it, too. Oh, well. Okay. Why were you reading the chat? What were you... Okay, you know what? Well, fuck it. What what did you see in the chat that you were responding Uh, to so uh, passionately? People telling me to get a romantic interest in assuming I don't. I might be in a long-term relationship right now. In fact, I am. Um, you don't, you, Rick, you don't people, owe them. You don't need to tell... You don't need... Why... This is the thing, is if you're... You need... Getting to a point... Somebody on the internet saying you need to get... A uh, 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 romantic interest. And then you feeling like, why need to... Ju- I have one. You need to justify that. I don't know get why I'm that so is, defensive. I've always been such is, a defensive person. Bro, uh, dude, I, dude, it's a natural impulse. That's why that's uh, that's how most people operate. Is what they said. I don't have. Oh, well, yes, I do. I need to let them know. And I understand. I, that's how most. That's how most people respond to that stuff. You don't need to justify yourself to any anything. And I know that you're you're working from a place of 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 insecurity, and I've really marinated in that place myself. And I'm I'm just telling you, you know, you don't need to justify yourself to to anyone, um, Rick. And I I think ultimately what I what I want to say to you is that y- you have um. You know, an, an awareness of yourself that I think will help you as you continue on. I've, I myself, and I've spoken to a lot of people and I have friends and stuff who have had uh, uh, insecurity surrounding things. And I know that you will, on an upward trajectory, um, slowly but surely uh get a little bit better with that just take the shame out of it because it's really a natural human impulse and and just don't feel the need to to justify yourself to um anyone saying anything about you on the computer thank you i appreciate that that's something that i i mean growing up on like forums and stuff um (laughs) not having many friends I've always like it's like I learned that lesson it's like don't stop well, what did you spend all that time writing that response for yeah. like what did you accomplish and then it's like now I'm at the point where like I'll start writing a reply on reddit or whatever and then I'll just like press discard because it's like uh what am I doing oh, with yeah. my time right now this is a oh, yeah. waste oh yeah keep 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 um yeah, keep checking yourself on that. I'm doing the same to myself. Uh, even when I see chat comments, I'm like, I want to say something, but I don't. I decide not to say it. Because it's all a distraction. It's all a distraction, Rick. Rick, man, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? I'm glad that you gave um, me the opportunity to talk about this stuff. Because I really, I really do love this subject. I think about it every day. So I um, appreciate you giving me the space to chat about it. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I just had a quick question for you, Lyle. Hit me. Do you, like, read up on specific modalities of, like, therapy? Like, do you read into, like, CBT and DBT and all that type of stuff to prepare for the performance that you give in this awesome show? Um... Uh, you know what? I haven't. I really, I haven't, like, I haven't actually picked up and read through a book because I just don't do that that often. Um, Me neither. Or it's, or it's fucking ever. But when I, say, I don't know why I said that often. I almost, I just don't read books. Um, I should. But um, I, I had one, I had a couple nights over the past few months where I was like, you know, I should read some shit, and so I, re- I did read like a, a like a little basic article about cognitive behavioral therapy, and yep. the way that they described it was interesting. They said it was, um, I think the gist of it is um, people present you with something, and you're trying to get them to see it from a different perspective. I think that's what the gist of cognitive behavioral therapy is. And when I read about that, I was like, oh, that's kind of a little, I'm goddamn in no way, shape or form saying that what I do is real therapy. But there have been a lot of times on here where, you know, I, I'm trying to help people see stuff from a different perspective a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of what that is. Anyway, that's my long winded answer to that question. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for calling, Rick. Have a great night. Take care. I'm going to hit you up when I need a discount on Microsoft Word. Because I've been using pages. And you know what? I'll say it. I don't care what people think. I don't care if, you know, this negatively affects, you know, any any big, big time dollar sign brand deals Apple wants to do in the future. Pages. You can have me on record saying this. I, you know, take your phone cameras out. Not a fan of Pages. Not a fan of pages. I used to have a, a Microsoft Office license. I don't know where it is anymore, and so I've been using pages instead of Word. And I miss Word. Hello? Hello? Hi. Is this Lyle? Hi. Yeah, who's this? Wow, this is Harold. What's going on, Harold? How are you? Are you, are you chilling? I'm chilling. Yeah, what do you do when you're chilling? Uh, well, right now I'm just pacing around. Your hold music is intense as fuck, man. That, that shit had me on edge. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's just, it's designed to drive people insane. <laughs> I feel very stressed, but now this is peaceful. Um, what's, what's stressing you out? Um, well, besides the music, I don't know. Just like things in general. I don't know. I told the call screener what I, uh, wanted to talk about if that's what you're referring to yeah yeah um, what did you want to talk about i uh i can't stop like pulling out my hair kind of bad oh. it's like an addiction um i don't think it's necessarily related to stress it just kind of happens it's like something i don't even think about but i notice that i'm doing it but i can't interesting. stop interesting yeah um what do you think is causing you to pull out your hair um, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> um, I, not to jump to this too fast. I mean, actually, maybe we should jump to this really fast. Have you spoken to a real therapist about this? Uh, yeah, I just started. Um, I started like a couple weeks ago trying to talk to somebody. It's been like okay. not not that helpful so far. I enjoy the process of like having somebody to talk to weekly, but. I don't think I'm really getting anywhere, but it could be just me. So what did your real therapist have to say about this issue? Well, it does have like a name. It's like a thing, which I didn't realize at first. It's like, okay, uh, that's helpful. That we, we know t- what it is. Trichodillomania, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. She keeps trying to find like the root cause of it. And I don't know if there, well, there's got to be something, I guess, but I don't think there's like a trigger that necessarily that I'm noticing. Like, uh, it's got to be stress or something underlying, but I think it's just kind of like, um, like a fidgety action kind of like, I'm not mm-hmm. doing it cause I'm nervous or anything. It just, it's kind of like, um, keeps my 
fans busy, I guess, if I'm not doing anything. I don't know. But now it's like affecting my fucking appearance. So it's making me like self-conscious and stuff. It's gotten to a pretty bad point. Mm -hmm. So is there, I mean, is there a weird cycle happening where you're stressed that you're pulling your hair and so you're pulling out your hair? No, not necessarily. Like I said, I don't think it's like stress that's causing it. Uh, it definitely comes out more in that case if I notice some stress. But um, like I said, it's more just kind of like an action. To, it like calms me, if that makes any sense. It's weird. It like feels good in a weird way. I know that sounds crazy, but. Hmm. Um, what are you stressed about? Do you have any ideas? Any? Do Can you peg it to anything at all? Um, I don't have much reason to be like directly stressed. I'm pretty laid back. I don't, I'm like a don't worry about it kind of person. Like, I don't know. I'm good at managing stressful situations. I think it's more, mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, I don't know. It's like, um, I guess there's like a vague state of my life. I mean, I'm in like a weird in between phase of like school and finding a job and whatnot. I'm probably, I'm around your age, I think. So, I haven't found something to do quite yet. So I think that might be part of it. But mm. Mm. Um, Yeah, it is hard to find uh, something to do. There's all the infinite everything out there. It's hard to narrow it down. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I'm on a path to be a teacher. So I have something, but I don't know if that's what I actually want to do. And I've gone this okay. far, so I feel kind of stuck. I don't know. What Has your real therapist given you anything to help that's helpful in dealing with this? Uh, she recommended looking at like fidget toys, like something to just kind of keep me busy, keep my mind off of it. Ah, um, I haven't actually okay. gotten anything like that yet. Why not? What's what's keeping you from doing that? I don't know. I'm just very bad at like taking action on things. The procrastinator, mm -hmm. like lack of motivation, all that. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of issues. That's just why I wanted to start therapy. But at the same time, I feel like talking to somebody in a gecko suit is way cooler than like a real therapist. When I get anxious, I fidget with my own penis. Oh, okay. That's a new one. Yeah. I, I could. I, I don't know I, if I don't think I've, that would be And bad. you know, I've never told anyone that, and now I told it to everyone. Um, <laughs> when I get when I get anxious, I, 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 what I do is I like take. I don't. Know, I can't. I can't. I'm not going to show you, but um, I like take my <sighs> penis and I like take my foreskin and I push it over my head and then I like wow. almost like you know those fucking oh my god I don't know what they're called but they're like little jello toys that are like oh I think they kind of look exactly like they kind of look like pocket like pussies yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know exactly I almost kind of like doing. fidget with my the head of my penis pushing it in and out <laughs> of my foreskin like it's one of those and that's different um, from uh like okay okay sorry <laughs> no there's no further thing i guess i'm trying to relate to you in that no no um, it's okay i i but here's the tricky part here's the tricky part that happens with me is that like sometimes i'll be like here's where it gets bet is like i'll be in the air, fucking airport or something and i'll start yeah, like getting well i'll start getting bored <laughs> and i'll like i'm about to go fidget like just out of habit and then I'm like, oh, sh I have been public. I'll get, it'll ruin my life if I'll do that. <laughs> I totally can't do that right now. Um, yeah. So yeah, by that, for I, I guess the the consequences of my fidget has caused me to stop. Mm. So That's I fair. guess I don't like to do mine in public either. So I try to yeah. avoid that. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Ha I, I'm sorry. I don't have anything better for you than to tell you about playing with my own dick, but I, that's kind of. Oh what no! I have. Honestly, that makes me feel great. <laughs> okay. Good. 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 Okay, we did do, something. Do geckos here. have penises? Can you do it in the suit too, or no? This one does. I do. That's what I'm. Sometimes yeah. I do it. Sometimes, like when I stop the stream, I'll like be fucking around on my phone, and I'm still sitting in the chair, and then I start <laughs> fidgeting with my penis, and I have a split second. Where my heart starts to race, and I'm like, I'm not live right now, am I? And then I check my computer, and I'm not. <laughs> but I could always forget Ooh. one day. I don't know. Who knows? You could you could just switch websites and make a profit off that instead. 
<laughs> I like the way you think, Harold. I like the way you think. Uh, is there anything yeah. else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, I guess I've been going to a lot of shows lately, and if anybody has a chance to listen to King Gizzard and Elizabeth, give it a yeah. shot. They're fucking awesome. I saw them at. You would like them too. Oh, you did. I think I saw them at. Yeah, I think I saw them at Coachella. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they were cool. I Highly recommend. They, they have this album with a band called Mild High Club that I also really like. Yep, yep, yep. It's the uh, Brunswick East. Yep. Yeah, sketches of Brunswick East. Go check that out. It's a good album. Uh, thank you for calling, oh, yeah. Harold. Yeah, it's good talking to you. You know, at first I was like, should I share the fidgeting with my penis thing? And now that it's out there, I feel good. But I don't, maybe that's weird, but it's the truth. I, I can no longer hide my shame.